Well, we've uh, learned in recent days uh, as if we didn't know before, but in a very painful way, how precious a thing is truth and how uh, we must cling to the truth and we must call out those who replace the truth, uh, not always with overt falsehood, uh, but with uh, convenience, um, but uh, uh, with their own uh, personal interest, um, so much um, of the ability to live a good life and live together is dependent upon truth. As you can hear, I'm referring to that because during this past week, um, since the last time we gathered here together, um, has been um, the additional um, um, crime against humanity uh, carried out by uh, terrorist groups from the Gaza Strip, in this case, Islamic Jihad, who in their ongoing attempts to carry out terrorism against Israel, um, had one of many failed rocket attempts that resulted in uh, a, a terrible disaster in which many suffered um, in a hospital in Gaza. And I do not say many suffered lightly. Uh, life is not about a, a suffering contest. Whenever we get into a suffering contest, as if one human being's suffering uh, matters and another uh, matters less or does not matter, everyone loses. However, um, uh, the, the casualty here um, is the truth. Um, that uh, Hamas, uh, being a, an evil criminal terrorist organization, of course, was less interested in uh, their own people, which seems not to be their concern, um, but then in um, uh, naming this falsely and maliciously, um, as if Israel had carried out the kind of criminal attack that Hamas does without hesitation each and every day, uh, and which Israel has never done. Uh, there's no question that Israel's military responses uh, to try to deal with the Hamas uh, evil and to keep their people safe creates suffering. There is no question of that. Um, but the creation of suffering is not Israel's goal. Um, and terrorism is very much about creating fear and suffering uh, to follow some kind of inhumane agenda. Uh, however, um, I'm talking this morning, uh, not politically, even though uh, this is a political matter, but personally, um, because um, while uh, Hamas uh, has engaged in this disgusting behavior this week, I wouldn't expect any different uh, from criminals who carry out such uh, inhumane and unconscionable terrorist violence as we've seen um, on the 7th and uh, in their um, attempts many times before. But I, I'm really thinking closer to home. Uh, because as it became quite obvious um, in open source information, uh, in information uh, in many parts of the world, that Israel was being falsely accused uh, of uh, this, and, and uh, that in fact, um, it's been clear for days um, what has in fact happened. And nevertheless, as we're here this morning, uh, the Prime Minister of Canada um, has still not affirmed the truth of what happened. Um, and uh, it is uh, embarrassing. It is horrific. It is a failure of leadership and a failure of personal courage. Um, uh, that someone, is, I, I really care not what that person's party affiliation is. Uh, it's not a political matter. Uh, it's a matter of truth. Um, truth is a necessary element in order for democracy uh, to thrive. And when it's already been a, a day, a, a more than a day, since I've seen and had access to videos uh, that have been shown not just on Israeli media or American media, but on Al Jazeera, for goodness sakes, um, that show that it was, in fact, not in any way an Israeli attack 
uh, but an Islamic jihad misfire that caused this particular suffering. Um, and the prime minister of our country is still more concerned about playing to his base than acknowledging the truth, something I have no doubt that at some point he will do, and it won't matter. It won't matter because the damage is already done. It won't matter because we live in a time, and speaking personally, it's not a political matter. We live in a time of um, exponentially growing anti-Semitism, of anti-Semitism that's been more present in the last number of years than it had been allowed to in society before. And how during this time, the number of anti-Semitic attacks um, has moved swiftly, swiftly upward. Um, and at this time, by the time, um, uh, our prime minister or the leader of the NDP or name your individual does the decent thing and the necessary factual thing, uh, he will have already given so much support to the forces of hate and to those who will um, carry out an anti-Semitic agenda on the backs of a horrific anti-Semitic attack, as we know, the worst one since uh, the Shoah. Um, and uh, th th there are no words except to say shame. Uh, shame on you, Prime Minister Trudeau. Uh, shame on all those um, who think that acknowledging the truth is taking sides. Um, uh, shame on all those who, by playing politics with this, have made you and me less safe because it means that anti-Semitic attacks are additionally fueled in the community and the country in which we live. Um, th there just it, it is no um, recourse. Uh, there is no repair. Uh, for this incredible lapse. Uh, uh, I, I, I call upon those who pretend to be our leaders, to act like leaders for a moment, and not only acknowledge the truth of what happened in this particular event, because so much has been made of it, um, but also apologize for being wrong, apologize for being slow, apologize for allowing politics to increase the tensions in Canadian society and the anti-Semitism. And I call upon them who have created additional needs for security for Temple Sinai and Jewish organizations and Jewish day schools throughout our country. I call upon them um, to show they're actually sorry for their acts by reaching out and um, paying for the security costs uh, of Jewish organizations that they, through this inaction and irresponsibility and dishonesty, have contributed to. Um, again, there's nothing political about any of this. Um, this is about what's right and what's true. Um, I, I say this not in any way. I've been very clear to diminish anyone's humanity or anyone's suffering. Um, but when those who claim to be leaders ignore the truth, they diminish themselves and they diminish all of us. That this is not political. It is personal. Um, we've heard just this week that uh, Romy Gonen, the young cousin of a member of Temple Sinai, is being held by uh, terrorists in Gaza. Um, we, we, uh, our prayers go out um, to Romy's family, uh, both in Israel and here uh, in our Temple Sinai family. Um, and um, we call out all those who, um, in their political self-interest, contribute to uh, the painful environment in which we live and who, all those who fail um, to um, name the, the reality of terrorism, the ongoing terrorism of Hamas as the rockets continue to fly at Israeli civilians every day and have not stopped. Um, and so we turn now to our prayers uh, for the soldiers of the IDF, uh, for all those in need of strength and healing, including those who um, have been abducted cruelly uh, by the terrorist criminals of Hamas. 
um, and uh, we stand together at this time. Please join me in the prayer for the soldiers of the IDF who stand on guard for Israel, for all who live in her territory, and for you and for me. וישלח ברכה בכל מעשה ידיהם, ויקוים בהם הכתוב, וכיתתו חרבותיהם לעתים וחניתותיהם למזמרות, לא יישאו גוי אל גוי חרב, ולא ימדו עוד מלחמה, וישבו איש תחת גפנו ותחת תנתו, ואין מחריד, ונאמר אמן. May the one who blessed our ancestors bless the soldiers of the IDF and all who defend our people. May the Holy One guard them against all difficulty and distress, injury, and illness. May all of their actions bring blessing, fulfilling the Prophet's words. Let them beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Let nation not lift up sword against nation, and may they learn war no more. May all sit under a vine or fig tree with none to make them afraid. And together we say, Amen. We continue with our prayer for strength and healing. Uh, for Romy and all victims of uh, the cruel Hamas uh, kidnappings, for all in captivity who are isolated, also for all many of them and many here in our circle of friends and family who are ill or unwell, um, who are recovering, who are uh, facing uh, an, an illness uh, that we don't know the track for in days ahead. Uh, for those who painfully do know what is to come, for all in need, the names in the chat and the names given to me into temple, we turn to these words of Refuah. <laughs> Amen. May the one who blessed our ancestors bless and heal all who suffer. May it be the divine will to provide healing and strength. Reveal to us the holiness of life, the wholeness of shalom, and let us say together, Amen. It's very meaningful uh, to have this opportunity to connect and reflect together. Uh, so we pause now and we remember, recalling those who died in recent days and weeks, those who died uh, at this season in years past, and those whom we have taken into our hearts with our own, uh, and especially um, this morning, uh, we can continue to honor uh, those who uh, lost their lives in this horrible terrorist attack. Too many names that we can mention but we mention names uh, in symbolic solidarity with all choosing a random place to begin in the list of victims and their stories found on the Times of Israel. We remember Chan Udom, a Cambodian student, 24 in Israel and murdered. We remember Colonel Jonathan Steinberg, age 42. We remember Deborah and Shlomi Matias, 50 and 49, who died shielding their son. We remember Fatma Altalakat, a uh, Bedouin mother of nine, murdered by Hamas, 35 years old. We remember Yahav Wiener, 36, a filmmaker who died protecting his wife and his newborn son. Um, may all of them and all of the victims and their families um, be with us. May we honor their names, their lives uh, for the times to come. <laughs> 